Good morning. I want to welcome you uh, to a different Sunday morning for us in Utsav. Uh, as we don't have the availability of our hall, we are meeting as live groups. But what a joy it is for us to come together still as live groups and to worship the Lord together, to share our testimonies, to break bread together if we can, uh, to listen to God's word for us, and, uh, and if possible, to have a meal together and spend some meaningful, warm time together as life groups. Um, this morning, I'm going to continue to build upon the series that we're looking at uh, this month of May, and that is on discipleship. The first week, I had shared with us about the call to discipleship. And last Sunday, we had Maju, uh, Sister Maju, talking to us about the cost of discipleship. I shared with you about how uh, when the Lord commands us to follow Him, it requires that we set a new priority where the Lord is first and central above everything else in our lives. We, in fact, receive a new identity in the Lord as we follow Him. And we live by a new mercy because we ourselves are recipient of a great mercy. The Lord was rejected for us. And therefore, we accept people just as we have been accepted because He was rejected on our behalf. We live out a radical mercy because we have received radical mercy. So we set a new priority in our lives to follow Jesus. We live out a new identity and we live in a radical new mercy. And the last Sunday, uh, Sister Maju shared with us about uh, the cost of discipleship. And even as we heard that message and Sister Maju had taken us through those points, in fact, you know, when we think of the word cost, when it comes to anything, we tend to have a negative bias or a negative perception uh, with the word cost. But actually looking at what the Lord commanded us in order for us to follow Him, we look at each of those things actually as blessings. You know, What we look at the cost, it is a privilege for us to be able to rearrange things in our life, in order to be able to let go of things in our life, in order to be able to commit it to certain things in our life. It is a privilege because each of those things, when we do it by the grace of God, they are not a burden, but they are a blessing. And this morning, I want to take it further as we're going to look at the rewards of following Jesus, the rewards of discipleship, of being a disciple of Jesus. And at the end of the message, I'm going to pray for us. But as we go ahead over here, I want to begin by highlighting uh, a very pivotal thing about our relationship with Jesus as His disciple. He's our master, he is our Lord, and we follow him. And the pivotal thing that I want to bring to us uh, is that Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 10, My sheep hear my voice. This is a privilege for us. This is how we've been designed by God. We've been designed by the Lord spiritually and in every dimension of our being is that we can hear and recognize His voice, and we have the joy of following Him. Today, as we un unfold this message, we understand that everything about our relationship with the Lord and our life is hinged upon this truth, is that we hear the Lord and we follow Him. You've probably heard me many times say this, that we don't and we should not live our lives by trial and error. I've heard of people who say, let's try it out. Let's see how it goes, and then we'll take it from there. That is taking a huge risk. That is not the way God works. We don't try out things. Many times, there is a bad cost to pay when you do things out of presumption or assumption. That's not how we've been designed or called to live our lives as disciples of Jesus. A disciple of Jesus looks to Jesus. He simply pursues to follow Him. And the rest takes care of itself. Now, keeping this before us, let me share with you the rewards of following Jesus. When you look at the Gospels, we see that 
each of the gospels jesus commanded not invited but commanded uh, individuals to follow him and it it is depending on how you uh, count the number of times in the gospels depending on which translation you use uh, in the gospel of matthew jesus uh, said follow me about seven times in the gospel of mark he said that about four, uh, four times in the gospel of luke again about four times and the gospel of john seven times about 20 to 22 times in the gospels did jesus say follow me directly and almost indirectly and uh, many times he emphasized that following me would mean this following me would require you to do this which is what we looked at in the last two sundays but there were times when jesus also said follow me and he explicitly clearly mentioned that this will be your reward this will be your blessing and that is not to entice us but that is to invite our hearts to the greatness of the life that he was calling us unto he wanted to give our lives meaning and purpose and direction and give us joy in the adventurous journey of following him so following jesus what are the rewards of doing so number 1 implicit in that statement is the reward the first reward is following jesus it is to be with him it is to know him it is to hear him it is to have the nearness of his presence with us and it is to become like him you know in the gospel of john chapter 10 verse 27 the verse that i mentioned earlier that jesus said very clearly that my sheep hear my voice let's just look at that if you have your bibles i want to encourage you to please open your bibles where jesus said my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me we hear his voice is because we know him and is because we know him we hear his voice and we follow him that is the reward beloved you know many times you uh, you would remember when jesus uh, told someone to follow him uh, he said come and see where i live and where i am come and be with me and what jesus was not inviting them to was to a classroom set up he didn't say okay see you for class tomorrow morning we start at 9 a.m. To follow Jesus was being brought into a relationship with him. And that is the reward. The reward of coming into a beautiful, overflowing with joy, satisfying relationship with Jesus. Overflowing joy of knowing him. We are not been commanded to join a program or a course we've been commanded to follow jesus and that is the first reward the second jesus said this in matthew 4:19 and so i want you to follow me as we look at these verses matthew 4:19 and jesus said this to simon peter he said to them follow me and i will make you fishers of men follow me and i will make you fishers of men you will find and help others follow jesus souls are a precious treasure of everlasting value and what a blessing what a reward it is for us that you and i can help others to know Jesus others to find Jesus and help others to know what it means to follow him and so that is a reward a great reward of following Jesus because when we follow Jesus then he will teach us he will train us to help others to follow him he will make us as he said metaphorically fishers of men and clearly i don't believe that this reward was only for Simon Peter 
We know that it was for all the disciples who were there at that time. And we see so many commands in the New Testament where we're clearly told that we ought to go and preach the gospel to others. We've got to tell others the story of what Jesus has done in our lives and with our lives. And as we share this joyfully of what Jesus has done for us, we invite others into the same joy. We invite others to follow Jesus. And so this is a great reward that we have, that we can become those disciples who help others to find and follow Jesus. A third reward is Jesus said in Matthew 19, 21. Join me in Matthew 19, 21. And this is to the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and he asked Jesus, what must I do to receive eternal or everlasting, obtain everlasting life? And Jesus responded to him uh, in 21, in the conversation that he was having with him. Jesus said to him, if you wish to be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. When you and I are willing to surrender anything that comes between us and Jesus, when you surrender that to the Lord, Jesus says that you will receive treasure in heaven. That which we cannot earn, receive on our own on the earth. Jesus promises us treasures in heaven. And we see that even Jesus mentioned that even earlier in the same Gospel of Matthew uh, chapter 6, where Jesus said that when we choose not to serve money, but when we choose to serve the Lord, and when we have the privilege and the opportunity of laying up for ourselves treasures in heaven. And so, we have this reward as disciples of Jesus. Have you given up things for the Lord? Have you had, had times in your life where you had to take a stand with respect to your family for your faith? Have there been times you had to take a stand at your place of work? Have there been relationships you had to rearrange to say the least? Or you even had to give up because they were not healthy for your relationship with the Lord? Have there been times you've sacrificed your finances for the Lord and been a sacrificial giver? Have there been times you've gone out of your way to serve people as unto the Lord? Have you sacrificially, steadfastly been serving in the ministry of the Lord? If there are things that you've done as unto the Lord, know this, that your reward is from the Lord and He says you will have treasure in heaven from me. Thank you, Lord, for this. You know, the Lord doesn't owe us, but He still, in His love for us, because He's a good Father, He's a generous God, He wants to bless His children. And He says, when you surrender anything that comes between you and me, if you surrender things in order to follow me, I will, or you will have treasure in heaven. So come, and follow me. The fourth, you will rule and reign with Christ. You know, in the same gospel, uh, gospel of Matthew 19 and this, in verse 28, you know, Peter continued the conversation that Jesus had with the rich young ruler. And Jesus mentioned, you know, how difficult it was for people who loved their wealth to follow him. And Peter said to Jesus, in, it is recorded in verse 27, Behold, we have left everything and followed you. What then will be there for us? And in verse 28, we see Jesus saying to them, Truly I say to you, that you who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you also shall sit upon twelve tribes of Israel. And verse 29, Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms for my name's sake 
will receive many times as much and will inherit eternal life. Wow. What a reward we have from the Lord when we follow Him faithfully. Jesus told the disciples, one is that you will rule and reign with me. I know that when it comes to the 12 disciples, the first primary 12 disciples or the 12 apostles who were called barring um, uh, Judas, but he was replaced by Matthias as recorded in the book of Acts, we see that the Lord uh, has in, ha, will bring them into a ruling and a reigning with Him that would be exclusive uh, in a way. But yet, the other disciples, you and me, we will also rule and reign with the Lord. And we see verses in the New Testament that direct our minds towards it. In Ephesians 2, for example, the Bible says that we've been made alive in Christ, raised up with Christ, and we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. In another place, the Apostle Paul says that do you not know that you will judge angels and you will rule and reign with the Lord. And there are clear verses in the New Testament that indicate that those who follow Jesus steadfastly, those who follow Jesus faithfully, will also rule and reign with Him in eternity. Fifth, you will not walk in darkness, but those who follow the Lord will have the light of life. John 8, 12. Let's go there. John 8, 12. Then Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. To be in a place of spiritual darkness is to be a place where you are alienated. A person is alienated from God. No relationship with God is not able to experience the nearness of God's presence or experience His leading, guidance, or His grace. It does not have the light and the life of God. No communication, no relationship with the Lord. But Jesus said that those who follow Him, having surrendered their lives to Him by believing in the gospel and by now resolving in their heart that they will follow Him by making Him first and central in their lives. Jesus said, now not only will you not walk in darkness, not only will you walk in the light, I believe there are four lights that we are called to live in or we will live in. Number one, is the light of God's presence. Number two, is the light of His countenance, His face. Number three, you will live in the light of God's word. Number four, you will live in the light of godly fellowship. John, First John chapter 1, in the light of godly fellowship. What a blessing we have as a people of God that we can walk in the light. But not only that, Jesus said in this verse, in the gospel of John 8, 12, He says, He who follows me, will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Not only will you walk in the light, but you will have the light of life. The brightness of God's presence will be in you. The illumination of who God is, of the things of God, of the things of His kingdom, the understanding of it, revelatory understanding of, the, of God, of the things of God, will increase and keep increasing in your life. You will not walk in darkness that I don't know, I don't understand, but you will walk in the ever-increasing brightness of God's life and light as we follow Jesus. Amen. Wow, what an encouragement for us as disciples of Jesus. I know there are times in life where we are perplexed. I know in times in life we go through valleys and situations and crises of decision. But we are not abandoned. We're not orphaned. We're not alone. We know the Lord is with us and He's not the author of confusion. And those are times when we need to not rush, but we need to wait on God. We need to look to Him. And as we wait on Him, God will not let us be put to shame. God's will for us is that we grow 
from understanding to understanding and thus grow from strength to strength, from faith to faith and from glory to glory. That is the pilgrim's progress of a disciple of Jesus. That you will not descend into darkness, but you will keep ascending uh, in from glory to glory. You know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the path of the righteous is an ever brightly shining path. And this is our privilege. This is our blessing and reward for those of us who make the decision to follow Jesus. Number six, you will be honored by the Father. Wow. You will be honored by the Father. John chapter 12, verse 26. John 12, verse 26. Jesus says this. You know, in fact, in the earlier verses, he mentions about how we sow our life into him. You know, completely. We don't keep our life, but we give our life into him completely. We disappear, if we may say, disappear into Jesus. We just abandon and give ourselves to him completely. Losing our life in a way. But look at what Jesus says in verse 26 of John 12. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now there's a connection between following Jesus and serving Jesus as mentioned in this verse. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. It's not possible to serve the Lord and serve His interests without us following Him. So as we follow Him, we will be able to serve Him and serve His interests and His purposes on the earth. And what happens? You know, that's, that's not easy to say or to achieve um, on the earth. The Lord understands that there are difficult muscular choices that the disciple has to make along the way. Many times there are course corrections. Many times we have to take a stand and the tide of opinion may be against us, even from loved ones, even from well-wishers. And there are times the enemy may even raise up <coughs> people who, who are naturally or carnally minded. And there are times we have to stand our ground. We have to Hold fast our steps in the ways of the Lord. And as we do that, there are difficult muscular choices. But here's what Jesus say. That if you honor me with your life, if you honor me by taking a stand and staying on the path of righteousness, following me, the Father will honor you on that day. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege and blessing and reward that we have. You know, many times I know that people who are hearing me right now, you've had to make decisions alone with the Lord. Decisions that have not been popular. Decisions where you've been, as a result of which, you've been misunderstood. You know, you have had to sacrifice things. You've sown in tears. And the Lord has seen you, beloved. Especially, I want to, at this moment, appreciate and affirm those who have even had to Go through severe testing in your, in your family because of your faith or your place of work. And you've, you've confessed Jesus and you've held on to that confession. God is proud of you. The Lord is pleased with you. It was difficult. You almost felt like you were going through the furnace of testing. And it's not that you loved your loved ones less. But it's just that you love Jesus more. He was, you were willing to rearrange the priorities in your life and give Jesus the first and central place. And I believe the Lord would say to you, you honored me and my father will honor you on that day. Before the saints in heaven, all of the hosts of heaven and the angels of heaven, the Lord will honor you. He will take your name and he will be the glory and the lifter of your head. Last but not the least, when we follow Jesus from this life, we follow him from the earth into glory. I remember years back listening to Brother Reinhard Bonke. 
And he said this, that the life of a saint is like an aircraft. And I can really relate to that because I love aircrafts. And I really love the moment when aircrafts are taxiing on the runway and then they get ready to take off and they speed up and hit about 290 kilometers an hour. And just at that moment, the aircraft takes off while the runway is coming to an end. That's the life of a saint. That's the, that's, a, that's, the, that's the journey of a pilgrim on the earth. That as we are following Jesus, we are speeding up, not to the end of the runway, but we are speeding up and heading up to the skies of glory. We are going to follow Jesus from this life on the earth to the glorious presence, into the glorious presence of our Lord uh, into eternity. John 13, 36. John 13, 36. This is what <clears throat> the Lord told his disciples. As he was coming to the end of his mission, life and mission here on earth. And as the Lord began to explain that to his disciples, the disciples got saddened. We understand that when we lose a loved one here on earth, or... Um, you know, we understand that our own life would be coming close to an end. It would sadden the people uh, around us. It would sadden our family. It saddens people when we know there's a temporal loss of absence. Simon Peter said to him in verse 36, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I go, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me later. Verse 37. Uh, oh, let's not go there. That's not relevant. But in verse 36, where I go, Jesus answered, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me later. And I believe the Lord would encourage us this morning by saying that you cannot follow me now. I want you to finish your mission here on the earth. But know this, that as you progress in following me, and it will seem like you're reaching the end of your runway, know this, that you're not speeding up to a end on the earth, but you will take off into my presence, into my glorious presence, and you will come into my embrace into eternity. Beloved, this is the reward that we've been called to. The calling over your life and my life is not an ordinary calling. The Lord has commanded us to follow Him. That calling over your life and my life is a high and a holy calling. High because it's the highest. There's no one higher than that. Jesus himself has called you. Not just another person, not just an angel, but the Lord himself. Jesus said, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And it's a holy calling because God himself has called you. And he will not share you with another. Not with the things of the world, not even with loved ones. You and I belong to him completely and absolutely. We've been redeemed by His blood. We've been sealed by His presence, by His Spirit. We've been, we are being sanctified by the power of His Word and by the power of His Spirit and by the blessing of godly fellowship. Our journey is going from brighter to more brighter. From understanding to understanding from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Beloved, this morning, I want to invite you, encourage you to further tighten and strengthen your resolve that, Lord, I want to be your disciple. I want to pay that price, that cost, because each of those costs are even a blessing in themselves. It's not a bad cost. It's not a bad, it's not a bad burden. It's a privilege for me that I can rearrange the priorities in my life. And in fact, when I do that, Lord, even those priorities will be blessed. My family is not going to be harmed because of Jesus. My work is not going to suffer because of Jesus. My ministry is not going to suffer or my relationships will not suffer, which are ordained by you. They will all be, in fact, more blessed. They will be renewed and they will be blessed when you are first and central in my life and in every part of my life. I encourage you this morning, to make Jesus first and central in your life. To be His disciple. Follow Him 
for he commands us to follow him let's pray together two words lord that changed peter's life that changed matthew's life that changed the lives of james and john follow me and you have commanded us with these very two words follow me and we thank you that there will be by your grace a rearrangement we received a new identity we living in grace and mercy not in judgment we thank you god that there are they have been and there will be cost to and price to pay but it's worth it because each one of them are a blessing in themselves but even more we thank you that you've reminded us this morning that we have a great reward following jesus to know you to love you to obey you to become like you that you will make us fishers of men that we will walk in ever increasing light that we god will be a blessing even to others we thank you that we will have treasure in heaven we thank you that one day after having completed our course on the earth we believe that you will help us to finish well and to finish strong that we will one day see the father and hear him say well done my good and faithful son and daughter that the father will honor us for following you god yet we pray god not by our own strength but by your spirit by your grace you will help us to follow you wholeheartedly faithfully looking to you jesus our lord our savior the author of our salvation we thank you for everyone who has heard and who's hearing this message we pray that you will touch them a new afresh that your presence would come upon them a fresh and a new refresh them god especially those who have got disheartened or discouraged by things of this life and testings and trials lord send a word of encouragement refresh them by your presence revive them oh god that they will once again strengthen their resolve that jesus i'm going to follow you all the days of my life thank you god for the blessing of meeting as life groups this morning bless your people god bless our families and our fellowship may you be increasingly glorified through our lives we pray this in the name of our lord jesus christ amen amen god bless you thank you for tuning in and have a great time of fellowship and may the lord continue to help you to follow him wholeheartedly god bless you